Hello besties. Welcome back to my channel. When you work a full-time job as a software engineer, sometimes the last thing you want to do when you get home is to code. But that's just not the case anymore. I want to do fun things. So for this video, we're going to build a Python snake game. Perhaps if you were born after the 90s, you won't know about this, but the snake game is the game that everyone used to play on their Nokia 3310, and it used to be awesome. It is a Saturday evening, and I have no other plans besides coding up a Python snake game. So let's do it. I need to put my hair up because that's the only way I can function. I'm going to create... There's this library called Pygame, which we can use to code up games in Python. This is sort of the template to get started with the game. It creates a screen or sort of a background that you can design your game on. Now I'm going to get the template from here and simply replace all of this and install my package Pygame. Okay, let's run this and see what we get. Oh wow, okay, we get a purple window. I'm going to change this to black because like, what game has a purple background? That's better. Can I be a hater for a second? I can't help it. It is so easy to write terrible spaghetti code in Python because Python just allows it. I saw a Python file with like 600 lines of code recently and I wanted to throw up. When I thought of doing the snake game project, I considered doing it object-oriented, but then I realized it would be so much more difficult. So I thought, you know what? Maybe spaghetti code isn't that bad. I think it's good practice to approach software problems in very traditional ways. So when I thought about the snake game, I asked myself, what data structures am I going to use for this? If you think about it, a snake game has three components. We have a playground, a snake, and the target, which is food. Our playground absolutely needs to be an image, which is basically a rectangle. If you think about it, a rectangle with color is basically a matrix of pixels. This food is going to be a pixel, which is going to be pretty much an X and Y coordinate on our playground. I guess the position should be a tuple, which contains the X and Y coordinates. Then we have the snake. The snake, I think, starts out as a single pixel, just like the food. However, our snake will grow as it consumes the food, much like humans. So a snake will pretty much be a combination of different pixels, so a combination of x and y coordinates, which means we're going to need a list to put it all together. An important thing to keep in mind when we're dealing with images in programming, and I remember this from my computer vision and my robotics times at uni, the center, the 00, zero center of an image is in the top left corner of the screen. Just something to keep in mind. I think that might be important when we're trying to move the snake. I got into this awful habit of always putting my thumbs into this jacket. Let me start by defining the playground and the pixel size and the different components of the game. Play pixel with this. So the screen is 1280. Let's say this is 50. I'm gonna create snake pixels and then build a list of pixels for the snake. Snake pixel and the snake pixel will be a rectangle in the pie game. So pie game dot rect I saw this on a tutorial online. Zero so zero pixel with pixel width. I watched the tutorial online where someone was using a random function to generate the starting position of the snake. And I think that's actually uh, a good idea, and that's probably how they do it in the real game as well. Starting position. I can't write any Python anymore. Ah, no. Shit, I got this wrong. Um, screen first, then color, purple, and then snake. Okay. Oh god. Oh shit, I needed to use the snake pixel. Uh, hmm. Ah, here it is. We have 
a purple snake showing up. Before we continue, I just want to say a big thank you to Code Chrysalis for sponsoring this video. If you want to learn not just how to code up cool games, but also to create a software engineering career, you can check out Code Chrysalis. Code Chrysalis is an immersive three-month program to learn how to code in Tokyo, Japan. It is open internationally and usually two-thirds of the attendants don't have a technical background. The course offers a very hands-on learning program focusing on full-stack developments and they have lifetime career support to help you find a job after graduation. The course can be completed on a 90-day tourist visa and depending on where you come from, the currency conversion can really play to your advantage here as you could travel and spend three amazing months in Japan learning how to code for the same price as basically a bootcamp tuition in the US or in Europe. You can use my special discount code for 15% off the program and make sure to apply before the deadline expires, which is the 9th of February 2024. You can visit codechrysalis.io to learn more about the program and to start your application if you wish to. Good luck! I guess the food will be similar to the snake pixel. Let's call it target. Let me say target. Generate slot random starting position, and then I'm gonna draw my target will be red. Let's see if this works. Okay, what are the odds of them landing on the same spot? Something's wrong. I think I'm generating pixels outside of the screen. Why though? Okay. Okay, I got it. So sometimes they were appearing outside of the screen, so I subtracted two pixels from the starting position. But actually my snake is not just a snake pixel, it's a whole list of pixels, so... In the documentation, there are some examples on how to manage the direction. So I'm gonna use this as a starting point. So I get the pressed keys and then W is up, S is down, A is to the left and D is to the right. Okay. Okay. So what's the difference between move IP and move? Moves direct. Ah, okay. Move IP is in place. That makes sense. I'm gonna create a direction variable associated to my snake uh, which is starting out as zero, 00 because it's standing in the same place the zero is in the top left corner so actually if we go down we are increasing our y so snake direction equals zero and now i'm going to do minus the pixel width I draw the snake, I draw the target, and then I need to move the snake, I suppose. So I'm gonna move the snake pixel in the snake direction. Oh, actually, maybe it's just the snake direction. Let's have a look. Okay, it's not really doing anything. <laughs> okay, so I feel like something's not quite right with my my screen. Yeah, I know what the problem is. I'm, I'm assigning my positions if, as if just taking the width into consideration, but that was actually quite stupid because my width is larger than my height, so I'm not taking the height into consideration. I'm just putting it somewhere, assuming there's more area than there actually is because I'm doing this as if it's a square, but it's actually a rectangle. And there's one easy way to fix this, which is to just turn it into a square. That's actually what I'm gonna do, because why make things more complicated? Okay, so screen width will become square width then, I guess. Okay, but this is pretty big. Let me reduce the size of this like 800. Oh, nice. Okay, it's still not reading in my keys for some reason. I'm moving the snake, but the snake that I'm moving is not the one that I'm drawing. Snake dot depends. Snake pixel dot copy. Oh, 
Wow, okay. <laughs> I need to delete the ones that are in the back of the list. Okay, yeah. Snake equals snake this. Does this work? <gasps> Yay, nice. Oh wow, this is really fast. I do need to reduce this here. Let me try 30. Okay, this this works. Um, let me do 10. Okay, this is more manageable, I guess. <laughs> it's not eating it yet. Okay. Okay, we have a moving snake. Now I need to code up the interaction logic between the target and the snake. So when the snake touches a target, it needs to increase its size. So I need to append another snake pixel to the end of the list. And I need to move the food and generate a new random position, I think. I'm just not sure where to do it. I don't fully understand this Pygame library yet. Like, if you do interactions between elements, do we do it after? I guess, yeah, after they're drawn, but before you display. Anyway, I'm just gonna try it and then try to move it until it works, I guess. So, if uh, snake pixel dot center equals the target center. I need a drink. The snake center and the target center are the same, then I want the target center to change, generate starting position. Actually, let me create a variable for the snake length. Starts at one, I guess. Then I want to snake length and I want to increase it by one. And I want the snake dot append a new snake pixel that copy. Okay, so oh, it's moving. <gasps> it worked! Oh my god! Oh my god! Ah! Okay, I lost. Did I lose? Yeah, but okay, I haven't coded that part yet. Why does it sometimes work and sometimes it doesn't? Like it worked after I pressed on it three times. Oh my god, it's working! Oops. <gasps> Oops. Oh, it came back. Oh my god! Imagine you're like a fish in the ocean and a bigger fish could just eat you up at any time. I think I would live in a constant state of anxiety. I'm so happy! This is really working. Oops. Okay, I think now I need to do the boundary condition. So if the snake touches the edges, the game needs to restart. I could do like a reset function. Run position snake pixel dot center. Generic random position. Is this an overkill? I, I don't know how to do functional programming anymore. If the boundary conditions break, there's a center, so there must be a uh, bottom. Bottom is higher than my square width. Yeah, square width. If it's out of bounds, then we want to do snake equals reset. Let's try it. Yep. Woo! It does. Oh my god. My Bluetooth keyboard is really not the best to play this. <laughs> oh, it's not resetting. It doesn't decrease. Ah. <sighs> What was it? Still not working. When I drink cold sparkling drinks, I always get a hiccup. I don't know why, but it's always been like that and that's why I sometimes avoid them. Oh, the snake length. I need to reset the snake length. 
Yep, that was it. I had to reset the snake length. I've never coded like a little game and it was so much fun. Ah, what a save. I don't think this is fully functional yet. There are a few more edge cases, which I believe should be addressed. For example, what if the snake touches its own body? I will upload the code to GitHub. So if you guys want to clone it and play around with it, feel free to, or if you want to give it a try, there are plenty of tutorials out there which are quite helpful. I checked out a few of them when I was looking into the documentation. This is it for me for this video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and thank you to Code Chrysalis for sponsoring a portion of this video. And I will see you in my next one. Bye.